You guys have taken different approaches over the years in terms of how goal setting and uh, you know stating goals versus not stating goals. What kind of approach are you trying to take with this group as, as they uh, head toward the season? Well, that's always that lingering thing out, out out there somewhere is the goals and how you're going to do and certainly that uh, the win loss record and how you finish or is something that you're always going to gauge your performance on and, and how you did. But we've kind of taken it uh, back to just uh, more of the process things that, you know, all of us coaches sound cliche, but uh, we've established a, a pack that we call it uh, to try to get a personality and reinvest into the culture and the work ethic and, and hopefully uh, by doing so and what they did in the fall and the building blocks they put in place there and then of course Friday starting the the starting uh, call for everybody out in the country, it's a common starting date that everybody believes they have a chance and they want to do the best they can and we're looking forward to that start date and uh, kind of reevaluate uh, where we left off and the evaluation of the team and individuals and get a good look at them to see how they did over the holidays. So that's, that's probably a good gauge on how we're going to start at least, uh, you know, the work that they put in over the holidays when the coaches weren't around. The past two seasons haven't ended the way that you guys had hoped for no postseason. Do you feel like this is a group that has something to prove this year? Yeah, but uh, we did. We had something to prove last year and the year before as well. So uh, hopefully that taste uh, in our mouth and that disappointment uh, when you wake up in the morning and you, you got the rigors of the challenges of the day and what you're going to put forth. Uh, We'll have a long memory about that, but then we'll have a short memory as far as the, the losses are concerned and hopefully go into the season with some confidence and believing that we're a contender and you know, day by day that'll reveal itself on how we're doing in, in that aspect. Coach, when, when you were able to sign that contract extension, you know, what did that say about the university's support for you and uh, I guess just what was that what was that like for you? Well, I thought that all along. You know, I was hoping and uh, the anniversary didn't happen and, and the naysayers or people were out there, hey, when are you going to sign that? And I felt like I felt the support from them uh, all along, just like in the previous 10 years I've been here. And uh, they validated that with uh, signing that on time. And, uh, you know, I guess uh, what I can do is my best ever effort, uh, not that I haven't been trying hard for the previous nine years, but to reward them and the institution for their trust in me. and. Uh, you know, nobody's more motivated than me to, to have a bounce back year off of the last two years, especially in what we've done, and try to create more of the momentum we had uh, in the first five years, basically. There were, I mean, the, the attendance during the first five years, especially like postseason, I mean, fans were, were into it. How do you try to kind of re recapture that and recapture maybe some fan energy into this stadium? Well, the event management, we've done a lot with marketing and the event try to make it a fan fan friendly venue I can't control the weather mother nature's going to do that and, uh, you know certainly the, the warmer springs last year was a not a very warm spring for everybody and uh, winning uh, makes the rain not quite as bad and the temperature a little bit warmer and hopefully we can create some excitement uh, with the wins and the losses and the style of play uh, will be a, more of an exciting brand of baseball and uh, that that's a good start uh, we've looked at other things on making ticket prices a little bit friendly, improve the food, all kinds of things that our administration's working hard to try to make it a better uh, environment for our fans. And my job is to try to make the best team as possible, and that's what I can control. You lose a guy like Petey, obviously, hard to replace, but the way Mercer's developed, do you have confidence that you're going to be able to field a pretty good Friday night guy still? Yeah, whether that's uh, – Mercer's not the only candidate. Yeah. We, we feel like Acuna's had a really good fall, and. He's a year older, and our sophomore class in general, we feel very good about them. And uh, Cole Stringer has been nothing but consistent. Um, and so, you know, we've got uh, with Mercer uh, the makings of possibly that could be our rotation. And we've got four freshmen that we're very high on uh, that are going to log uh, significant innings, whether it's in a starting role or a relief role. And then, uh, you know, possibly looking at Kenyon and uh, Nelson in the, in the back end and, and Parker Kelly's really had a good summer and a good fall and so uh, we look like we will be able to get off to a good start on the mound and we've got some good young guys that uh, we think will fill the gaps and get us to the back end of the bullpen. Now those roles could change. Kenyon could be a starter and Nelly could be a starter and so we're still trying to figure that out. And, uh, we 
trying to prep them all for being able to get their arms ready to do either and then see how everything maps itself out on, on what's best for the team. What do you like about Acuna that keeps him in that conversation? Well, he's, uh, he's throwing harder. You know, he's a, he's a thin kid. But uh, you test him in the weights, and you know, uh, pound for pound, he's one of our strongest uh, core guys and uh, leg leg drive guys, and, and that's showing up on the mound. He's throwing harder. He's touching 93 now, and that isn't everything. His command's better, and the depth and his change and breaking ball have really, really improved. So he's a three pitch mix guy with command that's uh, been able to add some velocity to his fastball. Every off season, you take a look at things and see what you can do better, where you can improve. Are there a couple things you saw this off season that you really wanted to emphasize with this team? No, I, you know, I think just get better in a lot of different areas. Play the game better. I mean, that sounds very simplistic, but uh, as I've told you guys before, I, I didn't think our system was necessarily broken. We weren't able to get our guys, uh, to the team and the players, to improve. We weren't making major overhauls, so I think having the staff back together with Coach Dietrich for another year or second year together will help him and will help us, and hopefully our coaching staff will be stronger. Uh, and we tweaked some things here and there, but not, no major overhauls in the way we're teaching our guys and the way we're going about it. We, we've uh, changed a little bit of the weight training uh, initiative. We've talked a little bit more about instead of leadership, fellowship which can be a lateral leadership uh, situation where it doesn't have to be a set of guys or coach work or coaching staff. That we need enough guys, uh, even on the flanks, to, uh, to, to, to adhere to the pack and uh, the mission that we have. And so hopefully we can get some more guys to the front of that. Uh, and everybody talks about leadership, but I think uh, not taking any small group or you know, a certain person Pat Flapp and Castor would be the obvious guys because they're seniors and uh, put, put that burden on them. I think it's all of our responsibility. What do you have to get at the first practice on Friday? Well, it's kind of a continuation. We're, we've been with our guys for two hours, two hours a week. Uh, we'll be with them today for 30 minutes. We do that four times a week. And, and so now it's just an expansion and doing things together and uh, sustaining their effort for a longer period of time mentally and physically. So. Some of the young guys you see kind of melt uh, when they're asked to extend the, extend the effort like that. You know, that's just a three hour and 20 minute period of time where a real game, baseball game, by the time they get here and leave, it's probably more like seven or eight hours. So uh, that'll be one of the challenges for our young guys. You mentioned the uh, freshmen in the staff. You feel confident about them. What about <coughs> the freshmen at the plate in the field? Do you feel like they're going to have a big impact on this team as well? Uh, yeah, we've got. Uh, Two outfielders in particular, Johnny DeLuca uh, and Evan Williams, that uh, have said, hey, look at me, uh, I'm a pretty good young player. And I, it looks like those two will really be fighting for starting positions out there, along with the returning guys like Jeff Gold and Taylor Travis and uh, uh, Jacob Gold, Goldfarb. I mean, I said Jeff Gold. We'd like to have him back, too, <laughs> the pitch. He's like 40, though, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> He looks. He still looks twelve. <laughs> where, where is Goldie at? Uh, you know, it's been a couple of years. Right? He's up in Portland, yeah. and uh, he's, no, no, no. So Goldfarb. Oh, Goldie. Uh, yeah. Uh, he's trying to be a catcher. You know, he's we're working him at the catching position. Uh, that's actually been a really good experiment. Um, that's a position that uh, we're not as deep as other positions, and um, you know, I don't know if he'll be the the everyday uh, catcher. If not, he'll be one of the outfielders, and uh, he's back healthy again. He plays the game awfully hard, so he's always got nicks here and there. And hopefully, uh, he'll finally uh, fulfill his potential. You know, going back to his freshman year, uh, he he made a big impact as a freshman, and then kind of had uh, little things here and there to have kept him away from reaching his potential, but. One thing with Goldie that you get is he always plays the game extremely hard and, and aggressive and very confident. Coach, I mean, Petey was Oregon baseball last year for you guys. He was basically the identity of the program. Just what's it like with, with him not being around, and is there a new identity yet? Well, we hope somebody fills his shoes. They're big shoes to fill, obviously, a big kid. And, uh, you know, Petey was a, a background guy when he was younger, and uh, he didn't really – emerge as that type of dominant pitcher, if you remember, until his junior year uh, when everything kind of 
became a perfect storm. Coach Dietrich's leadership, his uh, experience in Team USA, and his work ethic, and everything else. And, and so, what you hope is those gradual increments of improvement that we saw with him, and then a big leap of improvement with him. We, we hope to see guys like Stringer and Mercer and Acuna to take those kind of leaps. And certainly, Jovan's a Team USA type guy and had a huge year as a freshman. And, He's not short on confidence, so hopefully he'll continue to improve like David did. And man, when you're good on the mound, like uh, when we handed the ball to David, uh, we were a lot better team than we were any other day of the week. So that's a big responsibility for pit starting pitchers to uh, fill David's shoes, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a guy that strikes out 20 or strikes out 17. Uh, starting pitcher's job is to keep us in the game, and our job is to find a way to win. Is Kenny on the guy who you, who you do see starting? Uh, it, that's possible. We're we're kind of grooming him to do both. Uh, certainly having that guy at the back end of the bullpen uh, with the type of year he had last year would be a nice luxury if we can fill the if we can get to him. You know, it doesn't do you any good to have this All American closer if you can't put, uh, create save opportunities for him. So we hope that uh, we have the luxury of keeping him in the bullpen.